Hello everyone, my name is Arkham and welcome back to another SH Figure Arts review. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Sun Goku Ultra Instinct Toyotaro Edition. It is, uh, it was a Premium Bandai exclusive. It is no longer available in Premium Bandai, so if you missed out, I apologize. But I was able to get them pretty much right away, so yeah, so let's just get them out of this uh, packaging because I'm excited to see what he looks like. Wow, this is a very beautiful box. It looks absolutely amazing. I love the art by Toyotaro right here. Probably the most jacked I've seen him draw Goku. Holy Jesus. Okay, and of course, the Tamashi Nation's quality sticker. And this does include the book, uh, the figure and book double set. So it does come with the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball uh, Figupedia, actually. That's what it's called. It's the Dragon Ball SH Figupedia. That, I'm going to be making another video, kind of probably a short, just going over the whole book. But this is a really nice uh, sort of uh, cover for the box. All the SH figure arts from Dragon Ball that have released over the years. It even has the uh, color exclusives, which is actually very interesting. So yeah, that's really nice to see. But yeah, th this box looks absolutely amazing. So, this is a whole different box from um, from the look of things. So, I'm going to start opening it up from the bottom because I don't want to damage anything from the top. And the bottom is always going to be staying sealed on my end. So, let's get this thing out. Oh, okay. That's kind of nice. So, okay. So here we have the Figupedia, the Dragon Ball Figupedia, SH Figupedia. I'm going to put that on the side for now. But this Goku still comes with a regular SH Figure Arts box. That's very nice. Probably a little too much cardboard in my opinion, but that's whatever. So here is the actual box. Very standardish for SH Figure Arts. It is just a regular Goku. But it is the Toyotaro edition, and he does have his signature on this packaging, and even the other packaging that we looked at earlier. So, yeah, let me just get this guy out of here, and let's see how he looks. Alright, so here we have Toyotaro Goku in the flesh. So, uh, he stands at a whopping nearly six inches because of the hair. I will say, that hair looks really nice. Um, it, aesthetically, just from looking at the figure and without getting closer to it, it looks really nice. Uh, so, to compare it to another modern Goku, uh, I don't have the original Ultra Instinct Goku, but he is being re-released very soon. Hopefully, I'm able to get my hands on him. And we'll definitely be making a review for him. But here is the uh, Namek Goku uh, that I have in my collection. If he wants to stand, for God's sakes. God damn it. What? Is there something here? No, there's nothing here. Why do you not want to stand, Goku? Okay, whatever. So this is what he looks like. They're pretty much the same height if you put them side by side. Their necks are pretty much the same. So I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of were made at the same time. Uh, but the colors are also... Oh, now you want to stand? Okay, I, I, have, all right, I get it. So, they look really nice uh, so far. But I'm, I'm going to put you out. So, looking, getting a closer look for this Goku, he looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, let me see if I can get some better lighting for that. Uh, it might be a little too far. But it is... Uh, he does look very exceptional. If I can get a focus on him. There you go. So the face looks so different from any other Dragon Ball figure. And it's again, it's this is the Toyotaro Goku, so he will be looking different than usual. But I do think that the promotion images look a little bit different. I don't know. It might just be me. I think the eyes are too big. Or it might just be the angle that they took this picture at, but from the 
uh, promotional images, but I, I'm, I don't know, that might just be me. But overall, this is another shirtless Goku um, that we have now. So I know we had the original UI Goku, then the Namek Goku, and now this uh, Goku himself. And I would like to say, I I love his um, tattered look, this ripped out shirt and everything. It looks really nice. And of course, the, the difference in blue as well, the the blue color is completely different as well as the orange. It's a little bit lighter, more yellow orange than anything. And this blue is more of an, uh, I would say probably more aquamarine than anything. I might just be completely wrong. I'm horrible with colors. Uh, but yeah, he looks absolutely amazing so far. He's very skinny, <laughs> by the way. Uh, again, just to compare him with the Goku, just looking at them side by side, you can see how skinny he is, even his arms. But that's just the style of Dragon Ball Super, at least in the manga. But yeah, he looks absolutely amazing. So let's take a closer look at his articulation because he does have the 2.0 model instead of the more modern 3.0. So he doesn't have sculpted butt cheeks, but he does have the little flaps on the sides. So let's see how that works. So, starting off with the head. So, it seems that... Oh, that's a very... His head goes very far forward. What the heck? I don't know if that's... <laughs> he, it, he looks pretty funny. Okay. So, looking down, it's pretty good, actually. Really good. Uh, looking up, and eh, not so much, but it does the trick. So, let's see what he has or he's working with. That's very nice. I love the silver color of the head. Uh, is it a ball hinge? Is it, it's, a, it's a ball hinge, isn't it? It indeed is a ball hinge. That is quite disappointing, but expected from the 2.0 models. Uh, it is not the same as the Super Saiyan Goku, which has a double ball joint uh, neck or neck peg as well. So, a little bit disappointing, but it's... It overall still looks nice. Again, the silver coloring is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so, for he does have the neck, so he, you will get some range of movement with the neck. Probably not the most going up, but everywhere else you will get um, a good range of motion. And let's see the the shoulder, uh, the the butterfly joints. Oh God, that is not. I don't know if that's just me, but I that it's not looking good, Chief. Oh boy, that's not good articulation for those butterfly joints. Those are horrible. Holy crap. Okay, uh, so again, I think the sculpted chest part and the back are not very well made for sure. So again, just looking at the Goku, I don't know if you guys can already tell why it's not very well made, but it's because they made these big... Uh, shoulder traps. I don't know what they're called. What is? Uh, I know there's the trapezes right here, but the back muscle right over here. It extends all the way over here. Why is my question? Because for Goku, there's a cut right here for him to actually be able to move his arm backward. But for this Goku, you can't do that. It it's get it, it's getting blocked right here. So, and the same thing for the the chest. This Goku's chest is bigger, and yet there's better range of movement than this Toyotaro one. I'm kind of disappointed. Granted, it is a 2.0. It's an older model figure, but it's also a newer release. So, a little disappointing on that. Uh, he does have the bicep swivel, which is fairly nice. Seems to rotate 180 degrees. Uh, and let's see the elbow that's honestly not a bad elbow i love these types of elbows so these are really nice uh, yeah i i like it more than than the new goku so just kind of comparing them i love i like this uh elbow more for these type of figures uh and of course the hands you can have the wrist swivel and of course a little bit of movement with the with the ball hinge so fairly nice fairly nice uh, overall, the the ab crunch, he does have very well sculpted. Everything in this figure is very well sculpted, and I want to address that. 
He does have a lot of uh, some shading throughout his body as well, which is really nice. Although, he doesn't have shading on the chest part, which is the annoying part because it just makes it look like he's just a different skin tone. And I kind of hate that, but that's besides the point. So, it, he does have re really nice shading. Uh, the ab crunch, I would say that's fairly good. I like that. That's a good ab crunch. Fair, definitely much better than the other and then the Super Saiyan Goku. Going backwards, you're going to get a little bit of a gap, but I think that's fine, uh, especially with how, mu how much range you, go you get forward. That's honestly really good. So, for the legs, they seem to be the very standard 2.0 legs, and we all know how those work. So, doing the splits, not going to be the greatest. You're going to get those, uh, actually, very well, actually. That surprised me more than anything, th that he's able to do the splits pretty decently. So, kind of moving these back. He does have the uh, waist swivel, of course. Uh, he does have the thigh swivel a little bit, not the most. You can definitely rotate the thighs. Uh, kicking forward. Very good. Kicking backwards. Pretty good. Again, the 2.0 uh, legs are very, uh, very good. Uh, in my opinion, better than the 3.0s to some extent. Uh, the knees. One of them is completely torn out and one of them is completely covered i love the detail and like the scratches i just wish the scratches were always painted on battle damage figures but that's another talking point for another video if i ever do it so the the knees let's see we do have to bend both of these knees to see how well they do bend okay so that's definitely something to note so i don't know if you guys can see it if, if you can see it, then let me know down in the comments. I'm going I'm to give you five seconds. Okay, that's enough. That was three seconds, but yeah. So, this leg bends more than the other one. You can kind of see it by the foot kind of being lower on the, on the left leg than the right leg. I don't have an issue with that. It's just, it feels weird. Because, and I'm just going to say this. This feels like a regular Goku leg that they grab from like the full power Super Saiyan Goku leg or even the blue Goku. And this is, feels like a whole new sculpted leg. E even the back doesn't look the same either. So, kind of weird. And again, they should be painting this orange, not leave it at skin tone. But yeah, that's besides the point. So, for the feet, uh, he doesn't have the foot swivel. Well, he does have... You can... The ankle rocker is really good, it seems. Yeah. So going forward, almost non-existent. Going backwards, pretty decent. Uh, toe joint, fairly bad. So overall, this figure has good articulation in some aspects and horrible in others, uh, mainly the arms, at least for the for the chest part. But yeah. So this Goku does come with quite a bit of accessories. Actually, not that many. Uh, he comes with like a $35 figure accessory bundle, but he does have a new sculpted head. So let's take a look at those. All right. So for the accessories, again, I mentioned this guy, this guy comes with the amount of accessories as, as a $35 figure, which I think is hilarious, honestly, because they asked uh, $85 for this guy, $85. So uh, what does he come with? You may ask. Well, you can see it right on your screen. Uh, so, in in the face department, we have a face, a serious face, looking a different direction, which is always welcome because uh, not many faces are like that, like this are included. Uh, a second face of him being angry. If you want to focus, camera, please focus. Okay, a fa an angry face. Again, it, these look great. And he even has some veins kind of... in in the in the forehead which is really nice i don't know if i can get an angle of that there you go you can kind of see it so he also has a very calm expression him being in the ultra instinct mode which is always nice and welcomed as always and he does have a whole different head sculpt that i'm not sure if you can change the facial expressions with this guy actually you can so that's really nice so Let's take a look at the facial expression first. Again, shouting expression for most likely the Kamehameha. 
always very well included. And again, these faces are pretty good and do really capture the way that Toyotaro draws Goku nowadays. So, yeah, um, this uh, hair sculpt is also very nice and very welcome. It's always nice when they include different head sculpts. And um, I like it. A windy, flowing hair head sculpt is always nice, in my opinion. Doesn't really justify the price for the figure, nor does the book, but that's something that I will mention later. So, for the hands, it's any basic type of hands. So, we have the two uh, key blast shooting hands, two grasping hands, and, or Kamehameha hands, and, of course, the fighting pose hands. I'm not even going to get a closer look to those because I think the accessories kind of suck besides the head sculpt and the facial expressions. The hands are very um, limiting, for sure, and I'm not sure if any of the other hands will fit from other figures, so I don't really mind that. So, I guess I'm just kind of going into my final thoughts. So, for this figure, uh, actually, give me one second. All right, so, I honestly am kind of perplexed on this figure. Now, here's gonna be, here's my rating for the figure. I'm giving this guy a seven out of 10. There's a couple of reasons why. Um, Granted, that's the score for him as a figure itself. The figure does lack a lot of, in my opinion, possibility and articulation um, greatness. It is the 2.0 model, which is kind of disappointing that they didn't use a 3.0 model for the figure. And yes, it was shown in the promotional images. Some people were annoyed. Some people were happy. I'm in between. I don't really care if it's the 3.0 model or the 2.0. I like both of them pretty much equally. I'm leaning a little more to, towards the 2.0 in some instances, but it, it's it's fine overall. It, my other my other issue with this guy is also the arms. The chest is just uh, cut out weirdly overall. I think they did a horrible job with the way that they cut it out. Again. The Super Saiyan Goku has like the perfect chest for articulation in terms of the arms. The, the, the ab crunch, not so much. This Goku has great ab crunch. But the arms are just horrible in terms of the butterfly joint. That butterfly joint might as well be non-existent because it barely does nothing. But overall, I think this figure is good and it's going to be, it's going to look great in your collection. Especially with that nice looking box. It, it looks absolutely beautiful. Now, kind of my other thing on this figure, and, and you can you can click out of the video if you want. I'm not, I don't really care. I'm gonna go into a little bit of a rant again on premium bandai. Now, this figure, I have it here on, on my side right now while making this, uh m giving my final thoughts. This figure is $80 retail price on premium bandai. With shipping, for me, it was $10. And the tax for it was $8 in some change. Now that is going to bring it up to a $98 figure. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think that's good. I think this figure should have been $60. $35 for the figure, $15, um, $25 for the book. This feels like they charge $20 for the book and $60 for the figure. This figure should not be more than um, $45, really. Um, I, that's just my opinion. I think as a bundle, if it was $60, it would have been perfectly fine. But $80 is just not worth it. It was not worth it back then. I don't think it's worth it right now. And right now, it's the second. It's probably selling in the second-hand market like absolute crazy. Uh, so... Don't don't get it unless you really want a UI Goku right now, or just wait for the one that's re-releasing soon. That's the more anime accurate one. This one is the manga accurate one. So uh, pick your poison at this point. I'm gonna be getting the other one because I actually want to see how he compares to this one now. It is gonna be an older figure, but it's probably gonna be from the around the same uh, the same amount of articulation and po and uh, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, 
Premium Bandai bad. This figure is okay. They could have definitely done better, especially uh, now uh, that um, Akira Toriyama has passed away. And this figure is pretty much the legacy of Toyotaro. I think as a starting point, it's bad. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I think it's pretty bad. But it's fine. That's, that's all I'm going to say. So, if you enjoyed this video, and if you stayed for this rant, sh short of rant, uh, then leave a like, I guess. Leave a comment on what you think about this figure. Let me know what your honest thoughts on this figure is, because I want to know. Do you like it? Do you think it was worth the price? Do you think it's a good figure? Let me know. And besides that, I don't have anything else to say, so I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.